These are basically like a poor man's Popo propellers, except you just take the whole motor off. Hey, look at that. <laughs> they ejected themselves. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. In a previous video, I showed you how I made 3D printed propeller hubs so that you could make uh, use of old propellers and you could have folding propellers, which is pretty cool. But then I got to thinking, well, what's more compact than a folding propeller, like for travel, you know? Well, no propellers. You just don't have any propellers on there, but that's kind of a pain. It sort of defeats the purpose. You gotta take the propellers off. Okay, so why take the propellers off when you can just take the motors off? So in this video, we're gonna be testing to see if we can fly the rotors off of the rest of the motor if we don't have that little piece of metal, that little C-clip or that little snap ring on the motor shaft and it's just held in with magnetic force. Now, I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this idea to try flying their quadcopter without the motors clipped in place, but it's a great excuse to go out and fly and have a good time and get some cool GoPro footage, so like, why not? Leave a comment below what you think is gonna happen or what your experience has been. I'm guessing that most likely this, the scenario where these would come apart would be if you are saving yourself from like a free fall, so the quad is just falling down and then you go full power and then the quad keeps going and your motor's like, I wanna fly, and it goes or maybe you're just a super racer and you're flying so fast and your quad's like <laughs> flying through the air just like that and you want to do a super sharp hairpin turn and you're like Whoosh! and then your quadcopter still wants to keep going because it's got all this weight on here and then your motors are like no i want to go this way and it flies off of there. So now, what are the advantages or disadvantages of doing this in the first place? Taking apart your motors during transportation for a more compact quadcopter. Well, the advantage is your, your quadcopter is a lot more compact. The other advantage that I could see would be that maybe if you're going through like a really dusty environment or maybe there's like metal particles around, you would want to take off your rotors that have the magnets inside of them and then put them in a bag in your backpack someplace safe now of course that does leave this part the stator and all the windings and everything open to damage but eh. as far as disadvantages the only thing i can think of is that if your motor does fly off that would be really bad but is that actually going to happen let's find out now, an important thing to note is that this quadcopter, this is uh, the guts from the original Wizard X220, so that's not a big deal, but these motors are a mishmash of motors. So they're all like 2205, 2300 kV, give or take a couple millimeters and a couple hundred kV. But they work good enough to actually fly. And we'll be using a four cell battery and with the GoPro on here, this the total weight comes in at right about 650 grams, so nice and light. For the propellers, I'll start off with the Dow T5040 V2 propellers, which is kind of just like my standard propeller that I fly with. And then if the motors still stay on, we'll move up to a Demon Power Systems 5053 Tri-Blade, which has a lot steeper pitch so I'm thinking that that would cause a lot more pull on the motor. So we'll give it a try. One other thing, just for the record, I'm gonna be testing this out for the first time. So I'm gonna be binding this up with this cold copta and uh, it's gonna be a great time. up. I've got to do this fast because rain's coming. Finally got this thing working on the i6s. Don't really like the experience so far. It's very difficult. Also, I really dislike these little key buttons on the back. I'm pressing them all the time accidentally. Level mode first. Okay. And we'll go into air mode. I mean, acro mode in there. Right. 
I guess we'll also be seeing how the reception is too. I think these rates are going to be good though. They should be pretty smooth rates. Alright, just getting a little warmed up. Okay, so let's try some uh, just kind of falling and then catching myself. Okay, that was quite a bit. All right, let's try some hairpin turns here, like a this tree. Okay, I don't want to. <laughs> not sure how much these ESCs can handle, so I don't want to burn them out. Like they're doing pretty good. Let's switch over to the other props. These are fully charged four cells, by the way. I think that's gonna do it. So it looks like they will stay on long enough for you to crash. Oh my. All right, well, oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. <laughs> they ejected themselves a few feet away. Well, that was really fun and very surprising. So let's take a look at the slow-mo because it's really cool and go over the learning points from our little experiment here. Point number one. I am still amazed how good the GoPro footage looks considering that it was just zip tied to the quadcopter and this is like a very vibration-y quadcopter and nothing is balanced and everything is mismatched and yet it still looks, I think, amazing. I mean, it's not cinematic quality or anything, but like for what it is, we didn't really put any effort into it. There is an ND filter on the GoPro, but it, it looks great and the stabilization, like, I'm just amazed with that. I couldn't be happier. Now, it turns out that the motors and the propellers did actually stay on. And I'm just gonna say motor, but I'm talking about the motor bell. They stayed on together with the other half of the motor uh, until the crash, until the crash happened, which I totally did on purpose. And that's very interesting because that's kind of like what I said and what I, what I have experienced, which is that it will stay on but if something is very jarring, like a very sudden force, they do come off. Also, all of the propellers on the motors that came apart are still good. They don't appear to be broken in any way. They might be slightly bent, but, but nothing drastic, as opposed to the one that was on the one motor that stayed together. It, it got this serious bend, and you can see actually in the slow motion right as that happens when it impacts into the dirt. One thing that I noticed was really cool was how having the GoPro in the back of the quadcopter, that allowed you to focus on the quadcopter as it was tumbling and spinning. It gives context to the actual spinning motion, I think. I thought that was super cool. Now, if we compare the slow motion, you will see that the propellers that have less pitch did not move the motors as much, which was expected. The 5040s, they moved the 
the motor up a, like a little bit it you could see it you could see it rise up which is interesting with these clear 50 53 propellers and the the 53 part is the pitch 5.3 inches so we have a steeper pitch basically a steeper angle on these propellers you can see that with these they were actually starting to the motor was starting to come apart a little bit more than the other propellers which is very interesting so on the one hand you could say well the motors stayed together so it worked out just fine they didn't come apart or anything but since they did start to come apart they started to pull away a little bit what that tells us basically is that instead of the thrust from the propeller moving the entire quadcopter up or you know forward but basically up with the motor with the propeller it was instead pulling the motor apart and then bringing the quadcopter up so basically we're we're kind of wasting the thrust or we're sort of uh we're sort of getting almost like suspension not really suspension but we're getting like mushiness and so i would think that that could possibly affect the affect the responsiveness if you were actually able to notice something that slight in the end though i think the downsides definitely outweigh the potential upsides of just being able to remove your propellers really easily because even though in this particular case the motors did stay together until the crash that's not a guarantee that yours won't do that and they did come apart after the crash so forget about turtle mode if you crash and then all your motors come apart so that's not really good i would definitely say don't do this i can't recommend this and i only do this because this is a basically a trash quadcopter and i'm just flying around in the backyard testing stuff out and it can be convenient for me to be able to swap the motors very easily so i would definitely not fly anything expensive of course i did just fly a gopro on here but i would not fly anything expensive or I would not fly over water or anything like that if, unless your motors are locked in place. It's also worth mentioning that this quadcopter is like a trash quadcopter and it's got an old flight controller, old ESCs, junk parts, the motors don't match, there's all kinds of vibration and yet we still were able to have a great time flying it around. It still took a crash and I'm pretty sure it works fine and we got really good GoPro footage even from something like this. So I think that it kind of goes to show that having the latest and greatest gear is not the most important thing all the time. The only question I have left is, do you ever fly your motors without the retention clips? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave me a comment and let me know. I appreciate you, thanks for your time. And if you like this video, you'll probably love this video right over here. Thanks again for watching everybody. And I will see you again very soon.